Hello precious brothers and sisters, YouTube family. Hope you all are being blessed. Today's subject is about marriage, and to be more specific, transparency in marriage, in regards to your thoughts and feelings you share with your significant other. In this video, I expose to you some of my sins, so you guys, um, sorry, in this video, I expose some of my sins to you guys in order to help you not to make the same mistake I made. So let's begin. First, I want to say I'm so grateful for each and every single person who has kindly donated to us. We want to thank you truly from the bottom of our hearts. Right now, our goal is to get at least um, 1000 to 1500 That way, we have enough money to get Aza a flight to Sierra Leone and then to America. Currently, we are at $345, and we still have a ways to go before we can purchase a ticket to Sierra Leone. So I want to say thank you guys for the support, and we are trying our best with God's help to get the funds needed for this trip. So thank you all, and we um, appreciate all of your donations. Go back to the video. As my time here in the Bahamas grows short, I realized the critical ways I've grown and the areas that I still need to grow as a husband, spiritual father, and even disciple of Christ. I've seen that many times I am still too selfish in my thinking and attitude when it comes to certain things, such as opening up about my personal thoughts and feelings. To Aza, this was a huge step for me and even for her as well. For the longest time, there was no common ground or intimacy between us, unless it was about the Lord or ministry. I find myself hesitant to open up as to what will be going on in my thoughts, and neglectful in sharing how I really felt inside. Many things would be said that would cause us both deep pain and even resentment towards each other, and rather than opening up and sharing how we feel, we will mostly just bury it deep inside or leave, as with the case with me. For the most part, I had lived alone, and even with the community, I was not the, I was not the type to truly share how I really felt, unless something happened that really, really bothered me. This was really bad, because when it came to building an intimate friendship with Aza, I wouldn't really talk about my feelings or what was hurting me inside. And I'm the type, if something bothers me, I show it all on my face. <laughs> However, this was a problem for her too, as it caused her to be distant and shut off as well. My problem was, was that I felt we were two different people with two different backgrounds, whom the Lord just called together for ministry. We were more like partners or roommates in our relationship, rather than intimate friends and companions. However, in my pride, I never addressed anything about it until weeks later. Most of us hold in our pain and what really bothers us because we feel no one cares. At least that's what the devil tells us. Not only that, but my fear of rejection was there also all along, telling me lies and filling me with fears that weren't even logical and true. My insecurities and doubts about myself begin to show up to the surface. But all the while, I'm trying to shove them down, trying to be the perfect, quote-unquote, spouse she wanted me to be, but failing miserably. The devil began to put thoughts into my mind that I'm not good enough for her and that she'll leave and find someone else who'll be all she wants them to be. Also, that I should not dare share my insecurities and faults with her or she'd lose confidence in me as a man and would have second thoughts. Man, guys, it would not stop. And the arguments just got more and more clever. I began to, pre to try and present this image of myself to her that wasn't really true because I was afraid that if she really saw the real me, she'd reject me in search of someone better. So I began to hide myself out of fear, all the while suffering inside tremendously. But I was so focused on myself that I didn't see that she also suffered as well. 
Because I closed myself and wouldn't open up to her, she also felt rejected and began to close up as well. And so we begin to put up these barriers. This led to a lot of impatience, more insecurity, and just gave the devil free reign to divide and separate us. It wasn't until we both began to open up about our insecurities that we seemed to have a lot more in common and really begin to connect with a lot of things as we saw all of our faults and feelings really, really come to the light and be exposed before each other. For me, my insecurities were mostly about Aza and also myself, how I looked, how tall I was, my ability to provide and protect her, as well as my appearance and even leadership qualities and my spiritual walk with the Lord. Can I really lead her? Can I really be the person you know who leads her as she wants me to? I'm not tall enough for her. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to provide or protect her, all these things. I don't know if I'm deep enough with the Lord to be the person she wants me to be. These were all the thoughts I had in my mind. For her, it was mostly about her appearance and feeling as though she's unloved and rejected and also the insecurity that comes when your husband or fiance is around another woman or has expectations as to how a woman should look and act. Sorry to be blunt, but this is the true reality, guys. Most couples do not address these things and as a consequence suffer much. I speak to all men when I say do not be afraid to hide the insecurities you have with regards to your wife. And also be, care be careful of telling white lies to avoid hurting her feelings. And the same goes for her as well. I did this a lot. And Jesus, and Jesus chided me because I was not being honest with her. She would ask me questions, you know, and, and to avoid hurting her feelings, I would just make up things in my mind or have this white, this white lie to tell for everything that she asked me. But this wasn't completely true. And this left her feeling even more secure, insecure, as she felt this can't be real. You know, this is a fairy tale. Fairy tale. This is fantasy. But for me, I thought it was true. I thought I was doing her a service. But turns out, I really wasn't. I was just, you know, making up white lie after white lie to avoid hurting her or offending her. Some, in some ways, guys, some things just shouldn't be said. But most of the time. Your wife desires and respects your complete honesty and transparency, no matter what it is she asks you about. And if she gets mad or offended at your answer, that is a problem with her, not with you. There is something in her heart that she needs to work out. And wives, um, you should be more com we should be more compassionate and understanding when it comes to listening to the open wounds of your husbands. And us husbands need to do the same. We should be an open book to one another. For me, as I saw more and more of my fiance's insecurities, my love and compassion grew more and more for her. As I saw a beautiful soul who has just been wounded so much by the world, and I wanted to cherish this pearl through love, compassion, kindness and gentle humble leadership i'm not saying we're perfect for we have a long way to go and still have a lot of sins to overcome but this is a huge step in becoming the unit jesus made us to be transparency is a key element in building a close intimate relationship with your spouse even in heaven all your thoughts are open for all to see and though you may not know it, the Lord expects the same thing in our relationship with Him as well. He desires that we tell Him all our thoughts and feelings, and why we feel what we feel. This doesn't put Him off, but gives Him great joy when we do this. It shows that you trust the person with your innermost being, your thoughts and feelings, and it's an act of love and trust. If Aza closes herself off to me, doesn't show me her real self, how she really feels inside. It gives me so much pain as I feel rejected and unloved, but most importantly, it shows she doesn't trust or believe in my love for her 
and vice versa. The same thing applies to God, beloved ones. He wants us to be an open book before Him. Even though He's God and knows everything, He loves when we come before Him to share what bothers us, what gives us joy and happiness, what frightens us, what saddens us. He's not some nonchalant, indifferent creator. No, He's interested in every part of our lives. He's the most loving of husbands and dearest of friends. So don't be afraid of opening up to your spouses or to the Lord, beloved ones. It's so important. It's a necessity, I might add. At this point, I kind of ran out of things to say. So I said, Jesus, do you have anything to add? Jesus began, Well done. You have found the key that leads to a happy companionship. Continue to act on this and be faithful to it as you have encouraged others to do so. My brides, the spouse I have picked for you were not only picked specifically for your mission on earth, but also for me to fill that void and longing for love and intimacy in you through them. When you hide yourself from them, you hide from me. When you neglect them, you neglect me. Charity, humility, and transparency are essential tools for a happy home. The devil cannot conquer souls who are humble and honest with one another because they leave no open door or closet for him to hide and exploit them. Learn from Mary and Joseph, my mother and stepfather assigned to me on earth. They were the most humble and polite with each other. Each disagreement was expressed with such simplicity and humility that it was not possible for the enemy to cause an offense. My dear ones, you are joined to one another through one spirit in me, and I love both of you. Therefore, you should see your partner as a reflection of who I am. Be open about yourself as you would with me. This will also give your spouse the courage they need to open about their internal sufferings as well, which will grow you both in mutual compassion and intimacy, as well as humility. Expectation is a killer in marriages, as it causes comparisons, jealousy, discontentment, and even divorce, which I hate. I'm not saying do not give your spouses responsibilities. I'm saying do not set standards that are beyond their capacity to meet. Do not imitate the Pharisees, laying heavy burdens on each other that are hard to carry. Imitate me, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Wives, love and be thankful to your husbands, and be kind and caring. You are not to demand much of them, but nurture them through unconditional love and acceptance, and submit humbly to them as you would to me. When a man knows he is loved by his wife, it gives him indescribable joy and happiness. What husband wants to come home to an argumentative woman? No, you should be his peace and joy amidst all the sufferings and pains of this world. Likewise, husbands should love their wives. Their leadership should be wise but gentle. You are not to be self-centered but self-sacrificing even as I sacrificed myself for you. Keep these principles in mind, my dear ones, and you shall do well. In the world, marriages are under attack, as the enemy has done his best to turn upside down the rules of men and women that I gave. You are to be my examples on the earth. I bless you now with my peace and love, as well as the grace of humility, which leads to a God feeling happy marriage. And that was the end of the Lord Jesus' message. And wow, I don't know about you guys, but man, that that is a very, very um, good eye and opener. And once again, I want to thank you guys so much for your donations as well. I pray you enjoy this message and that it encourages you guys who have spouses as well. May the Lord bless you and give you all His grace and His peace to be examples to the world what a true marriage between man and woman looks like. 
Amen.